Good evening, everybody. Time Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. So, we're going to be going back to the tropics here once again. And we are, of course, dealing with the remnants of Alberto. This is actually the last advisory that got put up on this at 4 o'clock here. So, over the course of the next day here, we're going to see this completely move out of Central America. But the crazy thing is, right where Alberto had formed, we have to pretend for another system to form. And then we have this system over here to talk about as well. So, this is what the main part of this video is going to be from this point forward here so I'm sure you guys are paying extra close attention if you're over towards the east coast in florida of course over towards savannah georgia maybe even towards charleston south carolina this is going to affect your weekend and then also again south texas will need to keep an eye on this storm because over the next seven days this has a 50 percent chance of developing while this area has a 40 percent chance of developing within the next two to seven days here so we actually look at these on satellite. We'll start with the one that's over towards the East Coast in particular. Not much going on with it in regards to organization here. And wind shear is somewhat of a factor with this, but it's actually dry air that's affecting the storm here. You can see that we're getting some new convection forming around what I'm guessing may become a point of a center. But right now it's very hard to tell still. Storm has just not really gotten its feet gotten its uh, legs under it just yet so to speak and time is running out here so it's kind of a do or die time frame as to whether or not this storm ends up getting named I'm kind of hoping that it doesn't this will ultimately though still bring in plenty of shower and storm activity as it draws closer to land over here towards the georgia and south carolina coast here so we can actually take a look at the water vapor imagery and get an idea of what we're dealing with here we do have some issues with dry air, mainly towards the center, but we're start, like I said, we're starting to see a little bit of development there. But like I said, right around that little center area, you see how that green kind of dissolves a little bit. That's still some dry air coming into play. It's pulling in some dry air. However, I do think there is still a chance that this could at the very least become a depression or a low end tropical storm. The next name on the line would be Barrel. And I do think this has a, pop, a decent chance of becoming barrel, but I don't know yet. I mean, I have to really see what happens with this dry air here. This dry air that's out ahead of it definitely is going to keep this limited for sure here. I actually think that with the sea surface temperatures towards this area, it could actually have strengthened a lot quicker. But that plus wind shear is also what's helping limit the storm. Now in regards to what's next here over here towards what is likely going to develop over towards the Bay of Campeche once again we have a lot and mass exodus of shower and storm activity here and somewhere in here a little pressure has popped up and once this clears the Yucatan gets into the Bay of Campeche this is where we could expect where I think the greatest likelihood for our next storm to develop it will take time for it to do so, especially with this crossing over land before it really becomes a tropical entity of any kind. But like I said, we already know the Gulf of Mexico waters are very warm right now and wind shear is expected to lighten up over these areas. So we may see a much faster evolution with this next system in comparison to what we saw with what became Alberto. So we'll have to keep an eye on this as we go. And the thing to make note of here not quite as much in the way of dry air to inhibit this whereas with this one we're struggling with it a bit more there's still some but there's a lot more ambient moisture around the flanks of this storm so this can be overcame for this storm right now but in any case though we have to watch both of these storms as we continue to go forward while neither of these have made it to tropical storm status or beyond we actually can get a look at the spaghetti models for this area right here, Invest 92L, for example. Almost all the models actually have this making landfall somewhere between Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina at this point. And then either turning back towards the East Coast or maybe just going out to sea. There's maybe only one or two that have it pretty much going further off to the north. And even that shows an a imminent landfall at this point. So landfall seems pretty likely. If this storm actually strengthened more, ironically, we would ha we would probably see this get steered out to sea and maybe not even see a landfall. But 
in order for it to be stronger, you usually have taller storms. That sort of hoopla there. We'll get into that in another video at some point. But based off what we're seeing with this, though, we definitely need to pay attention to this for the weekend. And then beyond that point, we're going to be paying attention, of course, again, to the Gulf. This is all part of the big pattern change that we've been talking about that's affecting our weather as a whole over the entire lower 48. And like I said before, big topic as we actually do for the first time our model comparison with a tropical outlook here. The European Ensemble is right here on the bottom left with our GFS in the main screen. Thing to make note of is, like I said before, over towards the Gulf and the Western Atlantic here. You can see eventually that wind shear does start to lighten up and this is where that environment for tropical development really starts to ramp up from this point and like i said my concern increases particularly towards this bay compete Strait, all the way up into central gulf of mexico and then there's the gulf current which is over here where this other system is and that's going to be a key component for storms as we get later into the year particular but this little pressure area we'll have to see how things pan out with that that gulf current can help strengthen and amplify this storm's potential like i said i really think the limiting factor right now is dry air and also there are some wind shear out ahead of it which is going to keep things kind of hampered down in this case but as we go forward into the next five to seven days here i do think the chance for development with this storm is still very much prominent i would say this is about four days out we finally would expect this low to develop over the bay of campeche here i think we're going to see the same areas get affected once again for the most part and then beyond that point we'll see the pattern be again like i said before become much more favorable you can see more low pressure areas starting to pop up here around the caribbean and the gulf and like I said, that does concern me because like I said, with the warm waters already existing over here and the lightning wind shear, that could spell some trouble, especially as we get later into the season should this pattern hold here. Now, if we were to look at the ensemble members, we're actually gonna duplicate what we just did there with the European on the bottom left. You can actually see these low pressure areas here highlighted by these red numbers within these little circles within the isobars here and you can see the increase as we continue to go forward here especially when you start to see that orangish color develop that is the likelihood of a much bigger system coming in later down the line while yeah we're looking 240 plus hours out 10 days in advance still the fact that we've been seeing this consistently over the last few model runs definitely is something that gets my attention for sure and like i said i'm starting to see a tighter spread with this whereas before you would see these little smaller circles and pieces of energy kind of just going wherever with this i'm seeing a particular fo particularly focused area right around here between the strait between the yucatan and cuba here and i said that this was a hot spot I said that earlier in the year that this was a hot spot. If we get anything to develop, could be a problem. Do we know exactly how this pans out from that point? No, obviously. Looking 10 plus days out in advance, can't really put a lot of merit into it, but I am noticing a trend here. And that's one of the first things you should look for whenever you do long range forecasting of any kind. So you can see that with the GFS. Euro has its own trend right there, and that's also why I'm kind of leaning a little bit against it. But even so, I'd see a little bit of congruence between the two. That being said, we need to make sure that we are staying weather aware across the Gulf Coast as a whole here. We'll be making another update on Saturday just to see how things progress here, because I do think that we will see some sort of evolution with this storm that's out here towards the East Coast right now. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and also make sure you're hitting that share button as well. I'll see you soon. Until then, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have a good night.